Genesis chapter 35 God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and settle there. Make an altar there to the God who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. So Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you, and purify yourselves, and change your clothes. Then come, let us go up to Bethel, that I may make an altar there to the God who answered me in the day of my distress, and has been with me wherever I have gone. So they gave to Jacob all the foreign gods that they had, and the rings that were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak that was near Shechem. As they journeyed, a terror from God fell upon the cities all around them, so that no one pursued them. Jacob came to Luz, that is Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan, he and all the people who were with him. And there he built an altar and called the place El Bethel, because it was there that God had revealed himself to him when he fled from his brother. And Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried under an oak below Bethel. So it was called Alon Bakuth. God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Paddan Aram, and he blessed him. God said to him, Your name is Jacob. No longer shall you be called Jacob, but Israel should be your name. So he was called Israel. God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall come from you, and kings shall spring from you. The land that I gave to Abraham and Isaac I will give to you, and I will give the land to your offspring after you. Then God went up from him at the place where he had spoken with him. Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he had spoken with him, a pillar of stone, and he poured out a drink offering on it and poured oil on it. So Jacob called the place where God had spoken with him Bethel. Then they journeyed from Bethel, and when they were still some distance from Ephrath, Rachel was in childbirth, and she had hard labor. When she was in her hard labor, the midwife said to her, Do not be afraid, for now you will have another son. As her soul was departing, for she died, she named him Ben-Oni, but his father called him Benjamin. So Rachel died, and she was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is, Bethlehem. And Jacob set up a pillar at her grave. It is the pillar of Rachel's tomb, which is there to this day. Israel journeyed on and pitched his tent beyond the tower of Eder. While Israel lived in that land, Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Israel heard of it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. The sons of Leah, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. The sons of Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin. The sons of Bilhah, Rachel's maid, Dan, and Naphtali. The sons of Zilpah, Leah's maid, Gad, and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Padan Aram. Jacob came to his father Isaac at Mamre, or Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had resided as aliens. Now the days of Isaac were 180 years, and Isaac breathed his last. He died and was gathered to his people, old and full of days, and his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. Genesis chapter 36. These are the descendants of Esau, that is, Edom. Esau took his wives from the Canaanites. Ada, daughter of Elon the Hittite. Aholabama, daughter of Anna, son of Zibion the Hivite. And Basemath, Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nebaioth. Ada bore Eliphaz to Esau. Basemath bore Reuel. And Aholibama bore Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These are the sons of Esau, who were born to him in the land of Canaan. Then Esau took his wives, his sons, his daughters, and all the members of his household, his cattle, all his livestock, and all the property he had acquired in the land of Canaan. And he moved to a land some distance from his brother Jacob. 
for their possessions were too great for them to live together. The land where they were staying could not support them because of their livestock. So Esau settled in the hill country of Seir. Esau is Edom. These are the descendants of Esau, ancestor of the Edomites, in the hill country of Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons. Eliphaz, son of Ada, the wife of Esau. Reuel, the son of Esau's wife, Basemath. The sons of Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zepho, Gatam, and Kenaz. Timnah was a concubine of Eliphaz, Esau's son. She bore Amalek to Eliphaz. These were the sons of Ada, Esau's wife. These were the sons of Reuel, Nahath, Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah. These were the sons of Esau's wife, Basemath. These were the sons of Esau's wife, Aholabama, daughter of Anna, son of Zibion. She bore to Esau, Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These are the clans of the sons of Esau. The sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn of Esau. The clans Teman, Omar, Zepho, Kenaz, Korah, Gatam, and Amalek. These are the clans of Eliphaz in the land of Edom. They are the sons of Ada. These are the sons of Esau's son, Reuel. The clans Nahath, Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah. These are the clans of Reuel in the land of Edom. They are the sons of Esau's wife, Basemath. These are the sons of Esau's wife, Aholabama. The clans Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These are the clans born of Esau's wife, Aholabama the daughter of Anna. These are the sons of Esau, that is Edom, and these are their clans. These are the sons of Seir the Horite, the inhabitants of the land, Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Anna, Dishon, Ezer, and Dishan. These are the clans of the Horites, the sons of Seir in the land of Edom. The sons of Lotan were Hori and Heman, and Lotan's sister was Timnah. These are the sons of Shobal, Alvin, Manaheth, Ebal, Shepho, and Onam. These are the sons of Zibion, Aya, Anna. He is the Anna who found the springs in the wilderness as he pastured the donkeys of his father, Zibion. These are the children of Anna, Dishon and Aholabama, daughter of Anna. These are the sons of Dishon, Himdan, Eshban, Ithran, and Cheran. These are the sons of Ezer, Bilhan, Zavan, and Achan. These are the sons of Dishan, Uz, and Aran. These are the clans of the Horites, the clans Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, and Anna, Dishan, Ezer, and Dishan. These are the clans of the Horites, clan by clan in the land of Seir. These are the kings who reigned in the land of Edom, before any king reigned over the Israelites. Bela, son of Beor, reigned in Edom, the name of his city being Dinhabah. Bela died, and Jobab, son of Zerah of Bozrah, succeeded him as king. Jobab died, and Husham of the land of the Temanites succeeded him as king. Husham died, and Hadad, son of Bedad, who defeated Midian in the country of Moab, succeeded him as king, the name of his city being Avith. Hadad died, and Samla of Masreka succeeded him as king. Samla died, and Shal of Rehoboth on the Euphrates succeeded him as king. Shal died, and Balhanan, son of Akbor, succeeded him as king. Balhanan, son of Akbor, died, and Hadar succeeded him as king, the name of his city being Paul. His wife's name was Mehetabel, the daughter of Matred, daughter of Mezahab. These are the names of the clans of Esau, according to their families and their localities by their names. The clans Timnah, Alva, Jetheth, Aholabama, Elah, Penan, Kenaz, Teman, Mibzar, Magdiel, and Iram. These are the clans of Edom, that is, Esau, the father of Edom, according to their settlements in the land that they held. Genesis chapter 37. 
Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being seventeen years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him, and could not speak peaceably to him. Once Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, Listen to this dream that I dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright. Then your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brothers said to him, Are you indeed to reign over us? Are you indeed to have dominion over us? So they hated him even more because of his dreams and his words. He had another dream and told it to his brothers, saying, Look, I have had another dream. The sun, the moon, and eleven stars were bowing down to me. But when he told it to his father and to his brothers, his father rebuked him and said to him, What kind of dream is that that you have had? Shall we indeed come, I and your mother and your brothers, and bow to the ground before you? So his brothers were jealous of him. But his father kept the matter in mind. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead, with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin, on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the pit and saw that Joseph was not in the pit, he tore his clothes. He returned to his brothers and said, The boy is gone, and I, where can I turn? Then they took Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat, and dipped the robe in the blood. They had the long robe with sleeves taken to their father, and they said, This we have found. See now whether it is your son's robe or not. He recognized it and said, It is my son's robe. A wild animal has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt torn to pieces. 
Then Jacob tore his garments, and put sackcloth on his loins, and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and all his daughters sought to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted, and said, No, I shall go down to Sheol to my son, mourning. Thus his father bewailed him. Meanwhile, the Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard. Verse 